Capulets. It's here. It's finally here. The second part of the surreal game iceberg. You know that uh two and a half hour video? Yeah, that was only that was only a piece, only a, only a slice, only only a sliver of what the iceberg has to offer. This iceberg has some of the most obscure, surreal, disturbing, and interesting games ever created. I'm super pumped to be covering it. It really is one of the best icebergs out there. I really hope you enjoy this video. It took quite a bit of effort to make, as you can probably tell from my uh, inconsistent upload schedule. If you appreciate me playing and reviewing over 400 games, don't forget to show the video some love. Here we go, the second part of the surreal game iceberg. Buckle up, this is gonna, this is gonna take a while. We start this second part at the fourth tier. As you might guess, the entries in the rest of these tiers are very obscure and wacky, and they get a bit disturbing at times. This is the only warning I'll be making. Some of the games are quite messed up. Madden Genesis is a game made by Blomko, a developer we saw back in tier 3. This guy makes some really good games. I mean, every single one is a banger. Like the masterpiece that is Embunkalaf Lambulus or Thanksgiving Feast. I am very thankful. Just like his other games, Madden Genesis is perfect. The goal of the game is to train your hardest in order to win the big game that's coming up. You partake in some classic football exercises, such as pump iron, pass football, run, fish, and drink Gatornade. After making our way through some extensive training, we are finally ready for the big game. After putting our training to the test, we end up fighting the goalkeeper, and uh, yeah, he, he, he breaks our leg. But it's alright, there's a, there's a halftime music performance. That was Little Richard performing his newest song. Now it's time to get back to the big game. After snapping our leg back into place, removing our concussions, and having a childhood flashback, we are ready to take on the goalkeeper once again. This time we go supersonic and completely beat the out of him till he dies. And then we win the big game. But it turns out our coach is actually our dad and he bet money on us to die and now he hates us. What? This game is uh, very illogical indeed. The illogical journey of the Zambonis is a game jolt game made by the developer Noib. The game follows the very depressing tale of the Zambonis as they're forced to leave their land and take the dangerous journey into a utopia named Zamboniville. I had to google this but apparently a Zamboni is one of those things you see on ice hockey fields. I never knew what these things were called but I, I was not expecting them to be called a Zamboni. This game is uh, very, very depressing and gets surprisingly philosophical. As you progress on the Zamboni's journey, countless innocent Zamboni lives are lost for no reason other than chance. Once you finally reach Zamboniville, it turns out that it's overrun by humans, the people that originally made the Zambonis leave the utopia in the first place. After arriving, the two surviving Zambonis are killed at gunpoint by the humans. Yikes. I think, I think, I think I need a minute. Super Mario Death Row is the game that I was not expecting to see in this iceberg, to be quite honest. The game revolves around a, a fictional Nintendo Direct in which Nintendo plans to livestream Mario's execution. Honestly, I could see this really happening. You get taken from your cell and are taken to Princess Peach. On the way, you can admire some of the lovely paintings that are on display in the castle, such as Mario at E3 2020. And of course, uh, the, the iconic Super Mario OSHA violation. Before we get uh, murdered, Peach tells us to go into the courtyard and say our goodbyes to our brother Luigi. Luigi offers to take Mario away and save him, but Mario says he's prepared to face death and with dignity. Also, Donkey Kong is is here. <laughs> what? 
After saying his goodbyes, Mario makes his way to the execution, and uh, yeah, Shigeru Miyamoto is, is there. After an insane and wacky crazy battle with his father, he gives up fighting and accepts his death. But then Wario pulls out a Glock and shoots Shigeru Miyamoto, ending the Mario universe. Then the game ends. What an epic game, honestly. It, it, it's so good. Eastern Mine is a point-and-click adventure game from 1994, created by the one and only Osamu Sato, the man who made LSD Dream Emulator. This game follows the main character, named Rin, whose soul has been taken hostage by some strange island. Rin travels to the island in order to save his soul, all while fulfilling the lives of nine creatures. As the game is made by Osamu Sato, you can probably take a guess at how trippy this game is. While I had no idea what was happening in the game, just like LSD Dream Emulator, this game has some pretty wacky visuals. At times, they can get a bit uncanny, I guess you could say, but when it gets really creative, it's pretty cool to experience. From the name of this entry, I thought this was going to be an EXE game, but I guess I was wrong. Drowned God is a 1996 science fiction adventure game developed by Epic Multimedia Group. The game is based around the conspiracy theory that all of human history is a lie, and that all of the achievements we've made were the result of extraterrestrial aid. This game is basically what would happen if the History Channel made a point-and-click adventure game. From the insane premise and the late 90s CGI, you can see why it's so far down on the iceberg. Oh boy, I knew I would have to talk about this game at some point. This game has a incredibly depressing and intense story behind it that could warrant its own video. You probably already know, but there used to be a cult in Japan called Om Shinrikyo. They're most well known for being the group behind the 1995 Tokyo subway attack, where members of the cult sprayed toxic substances on several Tokyo metro lines, killing 13 people and injuring about 50. After this attack, they would go on to commit more and more until the cult finally dissipated in 1996. This entry refers to the parody game made about the cult. Why you would make a game about a real world cult? I am a... Uh, I'm not too sure. This game was made by Happy Soft, the same company behind Hong Kong 97. So, uh, yeah, there's that. There's a lot of misconception on the internet that the game was propaganda made by the cult, when in reality the game was made to mock the cult and the attacks. The game is, uh, very eerie and surreal, using real life footage and images from the cult. The players take the role of the cult's leader and manages the cult operations, collecting resources and recruiting new members, with the end goal of carrying out the 1995 subway attacks. The game has two different endings, one where the player succeeds and carries out the attack, and one where the world ends. Sluggish Moors is, uh, well, I I'm not really sure what it is. I don't think you're meant to know what the game is. According to this wiki, Sluggish Moors is a collection of sci-fi games made by this guy named Jake Clover. The series apparently involves space travel, predicting the future, and aliens. These games are very, very disturbing, and gross, and weird, and gross. They just, it, they hurt to look at. This entry refers to the large amount of games made by Kanaguti Soft. Kanaguti is this website that contains some art, music, and also some games. Some of these games are pretty cool and fun to mess around with, while others are this. These games seem to be a showcase of the creator's art and music that's also on the website. And some of their stuff is actually not bad, but yeah, most of it is uh, nightmare fuel. Radbad.sys is a surreal vaporwave exe game. Based on my channel, you might think I would be pumped to play a game like this. And while at first I was, my excitement quickly faded. As you see, this game is uh, it's colourful, a bit a bit too colourful. The gameplay is pretty simple. You just read shit and click shit to read more shit and repeat. The story behind the game is not different from other EXE games. Some reddit user mysteriously finds a USB and decides to see what's on it. They go home and <laughs> no way, it contains a haunted game. That's crazy. While some of the visuals are pretty good, the majority of the game consists of flashing lights and VHS static that gave me a, uh, a migraine. If you're epileptic, don't even bother playing it. In fact, don't play any of the games. 
on this iceberg. There's, there's a 90% chance you're gonna die. This entry refers to the itch.io user, Yames, that makes some pretty unique and well-made horror games. I played two of the seven games, and I gotta say, I'm quite impressed. While very surreal and comedic at times, the games still manage to be rather eerie and atmospheric. While they're pretty short, Yames games clearly have a ton of thought and effort put into them, and are very unique and interesting. For example, take the game Growing My Grandpa, a point-and-click horror game where you grow your grandpa. Amazing. Critters for Sale is a compilation of five short stories, all of which occur in different eras and locations, with each one touching on a certain theme, such as time travel and black magic. The game plays as sort of a mix between a point-and-click adventure game and a visual novel. And as you see from this gameplay, the art style is pretty, pretty cool looking. Although the stories are largely self-contained, each one hints at an overarching story about some devil men and a group called the the Paradise Architects. This game is relatively known within the community and has been received pretty well, having overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Also, uh, Death Grips. This game is definitely inspired by Death Grips. Glass Armageddon is a 1988 post-apocalyptic role-playing video game released for the PC-88. Described to be the antithesis of the Dragon Quest series, the story revolves around what life is like after all humans and animals have been wiped out by a mysterious force. The game is quite well known in both Japan and the rest of the world due to its really well-made music. While this game is talked about a lot for its music, it's not really well known for its visuals, which is a bit of a shame. The game has some really cool looking art. A Solemus is a very creepy and disturbing point-and-click claymation game from 2020. This game showcases some really cool looking claymation as you click and interact with different stuff to progress. From what I can tell, there's different endings, and there's probably some sort of artistic message behind it all, but that's not really what I cared about. I really enjoy claymation, and this game definitely does it well. I wanted to keep playing it to unlock new paths, just so I could see all the animations. They just look, look so cool. Lilith Zone is an indie developer that makes, you guessed it, surreal games. They're the person who made the game Crypt Worlds back in Tier 3. They're also known for the game On Air Gardens, a game where you traverse a group of liminal and surreal spaces. Oh, and they, they also made the game Elf Bowling RPG, Episode 5, if you meet the Santa on the road, roast him over an open fire. <laughs> I am a tree, you are not, ha ha, is an RPG maker game from 2017. In the game, you play as a piss worm that has risen from the sea of piss. You walk around the land, dying and getting revived into different things, such as a bladder and a turtle and this thing. I didn't beat the game because I got stuck trying to get past this uh, pool of blood and I couldn't listen to that annoying guitar rift any longer. I'm not sure about the name of the game. Maybe you eventually meet a tree or something. I don't know. Bizarreware is a collection of short, bizarre micro games. If you think that WarioWare is surreal, play, play this game and, and then get back to me. The game has a really cool art style and some great music, but as for the actual mini games in the collection, I'm kind of on the fence. It might be because I wasn't using a controller, but the mini games seem to be kind of kind of broken and unplayable. Yeah, I probably should have used a controller. Apart from the awful keyboard controls, I really, I really like the game. It's just like experiencing WarioWare for the first time as a kid. It's just really bizarre and overwhelming. Sidonisus is a masterpiece. Sidonisus is a game where Satan sends you to hell and you have to wander around drinking, smoking, and gambling until you eventually find Satan and beat the shit out of him. This game has some of the best dialogue I have ever seen. Like you go into some guy's house and he says, what's up motherfucker? Just hanging out in my sweet ass house. Check it out. It's real great. Or like when you go on a computer and get an ad saying, buy free, get two free dick pills on sale. Dick pills, get dick pills on sale now. Or even this random guy in a hotel that says, Fuck you, I, I fucking hate you. Ah, uh, yeah, I couldn't get this game to work. 
from the uh, from the title and this description I found, it seems to be a collection of 12 mini games made by 12 different developers. It sounds pretty cool, but yeah, can't can't play it though. The Deep Sleep Trilogy is a set of three point-and-click adventure browser games made from 2012 to 2014. The games revolve around the concept of lucid dreaming and becoming trapped within your dreams. They play like a standard point-and-click adventure game in which you explore your eerie nightmares and search for a way out by solving various puzzles. I really like the art style of the games, they have some really good visuals. The three games seem to have an overarching plot about these shadow people and the actions in your dreams having an effect on the real world, but I didn't, I didn't get that far. The La La Land series is a set of five Game Maker games made in 2006. Each game in the series is short, abstract, and quite surreal. They're very uh, thrown together, I guess you could say. From what I found, the low effort that can be seen in these games is deliberate. Apparently the games are meant to force players to break through the surface level aspects of a game such as visuals and audio to find a deeper and thought provoking story. Either that or, you know, the, d the developer just didn't want to put effort into it. Welcome to Heaven is a game from 2017 where you were let into heaven and given the title Boy of Wonders. Nice. We get tasked with the holy duty of judging the souls trapped in purgatory. We get to decide whether they should go to heaven or hell, because I obviously believe in forgiveness and all that. I decide to let everyone into heaven. Even this guy in a monkey suit holding a child in a cage. He says that if I don't let him into heaven, he will kill the child. I guess I... I have no option. After letting in a corporate shark, internet troll, a bully, and a, a monkey, this guy says that I have failed my duty and he abandons heaven in order to make a new one. Oh well, my, my bad, I guess. Soft and Cuddly is a horror adventure game released for the ZX Spectrum in 1987. In Soft and Cuddly, you take control of the son of an android queen. The android queen has imprisoned her husband in a refrigerator, but also the queen got dismembered in an accident, leaving her husband in danger of being attacked by evil spirits. The goal of the game is to collect the eight pieces of the android queen's body, then stitch them back together to save your dad that's trapped in a fridge. Water Womb World is a horror game made in 2020 by Yames, the developer that was just mentioned in the iceberg. Like his other games, Water Womb World is super impressive and has a really well made atmosphere with a meaningful and vivid story. In the game, you crawl around the ocean floor, catching fish, finding different objects, with the main goal of finding Eden. It really gives off a 70s dark fantasy vibe with its visuals, and I really like it. My only issue is its length. It was really good, I just, I wish it was a bit longer. Classic Game is an ASCII adventure game from 2017, created by the developer Horses Music Dogs. What a name. The game revolves around the player character, the Hermit, returning to a land that has been overrun by curses. The game has a pretty unique and interesting combat system, but the main draw of the gameplay is the hidden events that you can find. In Classic Game, there are over 50 unique hidden events that you can find, with each one being interesting and worthwhile. Despite the amount of stuff to do in the game, I still have no idea what was happening. Something about uh, eating human souls and like defeating curses or, or, or something. Home Game, as you can guess from the name, is another game created by Horses Music Dogs. Home Game is the exact same as Classic Game, except now you explore a town instead of some random hill location. Cool. The Tomb Batula is a walking simulator from 2020 made by Bryce Butcher. The game is another PS1 inspired walking simulator where you, uh, you, you walk. The plot revolves around waking up in a room known as the Plant Room. The player progresses through the world until they meet a weird looking monster that tells them that the world is in a state of limbo due to the water around this thing called the, the Fate Birch. The player is tasked with filling up these three test tubes and removing the water and saving the world. Weird story, but the, the graphics are cool. I think that describes the fucking half of these games. 
Dead Dreams is a 2D psychological horror game that focuses on puzzle solving and a complex and detailed non-linear story. This game is really not bad. It's like if Silent Hill 2 was remade in RPG Maker. It has a lot of effort put into it. The story revolves around this school club and the death of one of their members. This mysterious entity called V forces the remaining members to relive traumatic memories and see a bunch of spooky stuff. Very, very spooky. Ah. Uh, Glorious train wrecks is, uh, I'm honestly not too sure. According to their website, Glorious Train Wrecks is about bringing back the spirit of postcard wear, circa 1993. It's about throwing a bunch of random stuff into your game and keeping whatever sticks. About bringing back a time when you didn't care so much about production values as much as you did ripping sound samples from your favourite television shows to use in your game, or animating pictures of yourself making goofy faces on your webcam, where every ridiculous idea you had, you would just sit down and code when you would make a company name to legitimize dorking around on the computer with your friends. From their website, it seems like they run game jams that are themed around what I just read. Their last jam, from what I can see, was in April of 2022, so I'm not too sure if they're still running or not. The games made for this game jam are pretty, pretty incredible. This site is a gold mine for surreal games, such as uh, Kicked Out of Elf School, or the game Grandpa Orb. Excuse me? What the f is this game called? Baby's Dream of Dead Worlds is a flash game made in 2010. I, uh, I downloaded the game and my Windows antivirus told me it was not a good idea to run it, so I didn't. Honestly, just look at these screenshots and the name of the game. I don't think I'm missing much. I want to die. Planet D.O.B. is an actual video game, unlike the last two entries, that was made by Microvision and published by Hudson Soft, the same guys behind Mario Party, in 1999 for the PlayStation. The game was produced by a Japanese band titled Date of Birth, hence its name, and the game apparently includes songs from their album of the same name. The playstyle varies throughout the game, but the main goal is to collect as many bits as possible. What a bit is, I'm not too sure, but they sound important. At the beginning of each level, the only background music is a drum beat. Whenever the player obtains a bit, it adds a new instrument to the background music. For example, if the player collects a bit, it may add a piano or a guitar loop. I really like this idea, and it sounds like a super fun mechanic. I wish more games did stuff like that. According to the Itch.io page, Electric Highways is a game that's all about experience and exploration. Everything in this game, especially visuals and music, has been created for the purpose of giving the players some kind of emotion. Yes, game. That is what visuals and music are meant to do. The game's story is about an engineer that's about to release a product online, but before they do, they want to take a dip into this VR simulation just one more time. The game takes you from level to level while you explore some cool techno environments. Ah, and the, the music is really good. I don't know why, but walking simulators always have really good music. Dopaminium The Heal Journey is an old point-and-click flash game that's equally funny as it is terrifying. The game is split into several different sections, with each one representing a mental illness, such as delusions or phobias. Other than the loose theming of mental illnesses, there's not much meaning I could get from the just bizarre shit that happens in the game. It's pretty cool though, look, look at this alien guy, look at him. Tantibus is uh... I don't know, I couldn't get it to work. According to its RPG Maker page, Tantibus is a surreal, neon-lit, earthbound inspired world filled with nightmare creatures and bizarre situations that exist by the name of Tantibus. You journey from your very normal and totally boring home where nothing weird ever happens to whatever exists past the first boss. The game also features a simplistic RPG battle system inspired by Paper Mario and other games. Don't Trust the Cat is a game where you walk around as this purple guy, collecting different coloured mushrooms, some squares, some cat bones, and some shoes, in order to pay sentient TVs, coffee mugs, and cats to get past toll booths. 
you know, at, at this point, I'm not even surprised. This game is is a masterpiece. It, it's so good. That's all I have to say. I, I've got I've got nothing. Hi. I released a software package containing 10 games entitled Cynical Software. These are mainly arcade type action games. Check it out and post feedback. Here's a screenshot taken from one of the games, Devil Duck. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. You remember that uh that all-time classic game, Revenge of the Sunfish, from way, way earlier in the iceberg? Well this game is uh it's made by the same person. Just watch uh Watch this footage, I think the game speaks for itself. Unlike the more well-known Revenge of the Sunfish, this game has some surprisingly good visuals and sound design, and it also has gameplay. It's definitely a lot more well-made than whatever the, the, the other game, the other game was. Molly and the Gun Mids is a pretty fun shoot 'em up from 2020. The game has some really good music and the visuals are super unique. I'm not too sure if there's a story or anything, I couldn't really tell. The gameplay consists of flying around this empty space and uh, shooting spaceships. Epic. Molly and the Gun Mids. More like Molly and uh, Molly is mid. <laughs> Alamari is a black comedy surreal horror JRPG inspired by Yume Nikki, Off, Earthbound, and Undertale that has been in development since 2013. This game follows Alamari, a hollow object head who lacks any emotions. He wakes up after a crash landing in an unknown location and is told by a being known as Hama that he must travel through nine worlds created by various human emotions known as the emotion worlds and defeat the emotion holders of the worlds to gain their emotions for himself. The game focuses on dungeon crawl, puzzle solving and turn based combat. While it's not out yet, there is a demo that contains the first half of the first section and from what I played it's not bad. I definitely see the inspiration from off the game in tier 2. This game is, uh, it's, it's something, it's, uh, y y your guess is as good as mine. I've got no idea. It's an RPG maker game where you, uh, walk through doors and get teleported to rooms. Whoa. So surreal. <laughs> Whoa. What a, what a great name for a game. Vomit Pizza is a short walking simulator-esque game inspired by old game maker games. In Vomit Pizza, you play as a powerful gamer sent forward by God to help Vomit Villain reinstate Earth to its former glory when it's turned upside down after a satanic cult uses sacrificial pizza to turn the Earth into a surreal nightmare. I, f I love this iceberg so much. The club is a really bizarre MMO created by Crows Crows Crows. You know, the, the people that made Accounting Plus with uh, Justin Roiland from Rick and Morty. While you can't play it anymore, I did find this article that describes the game. When you enter the club, you're given a silly randomly generated username and an even more silly randomly selected 2D avatar. You can then wander around a weird nightclub that looks like it's been patched together by pieces of 90s internet. You can chat, level up, change your avatar, dance and listen to over 100 surprisingly good 90s style dance tunes. It's a weird and wonderful experience with no real objective other than to just enjoy yourself. Applesauce Apartments is a very weird and very terrifying game where you collect rent from the residents of an apartment building. Apparently some plague or something happened and all the residents are abominations of uh, humanoid apples. The visuals combined with the, uh, the music and the, the in-depth disturbing text about being transformed into an apple make this game really gross and disturbing and icky and gross and, and and spooky neighbor is a game about the price that comes with finding your dream apartment made as a game boy rom the game revolves around a girl moving into a new apartment only to find that one of her neighbors is up to something 
turns out the neighbor is a zombie or something and you end up shooting it and lighting the building on fire. That's only the first chapter. The game has five. In each chapter, the same girl from the first looks for a new place to live after experiencing some evil shit in the last. It's really well made, but is more of a horror game than it is a surreal game. Finally, I've been waiting to see this game on here for so long. Squirrel Stapler is a classic surreal horror game that tells the story of a man who hunts squirrels in a forest, all to staple them to a skinned body of his wife so that he can meet God. Turns out that God is a giant mutilated squirrel head that makes very uh, disturbing noises. Amazing. This game is quite old, but was released to Steam a few months ago, and you've probably seen Markiplier or someone play it. This game is very wacky and uh, surreal, and definitely deserves to be down this far. To Dawn and Back is an art horror game from 2020, where you experience more than 20 unique dreams, with each one containing unique and surreal characters. Determining on your actions during each dream, the next dream you experience will be different. I, I, f I found this game to be uh, quite disturbing. The art of the characters combined with the music just had me on edge the whole time. I do plan to revisit it eventually, as it seems to be pretty deep and there's a lot of, a lot of things going on. I wasn't too sure if there were different endings that you can get, but seeing your choices play out is really well done and it's fun. The game has a massive amount of content for a free title and you should definitely check it out. Goddamn. The music of this game, it, it brings tears to my eyes. The Night Stepped by Blood River is yet another walking simulator with some really cool visuals and a great soundtrack. The main draw to this game is definitely the music. Each addition to the soundtrack is better than the last and it really fits the abstract yet calming world you explore throughout the game. There's not much meaning or anything behind the game as far as I know, just a cool atmosphere. Mayhand Mansion is a 7 level mod for the game Doom 2, made back in 2013. This mod is inspired by the game Exploding Lips, a Doom clone where you walk around and shoot, uh, exploding lips. In Mayhem Mansion, you explore a haunted mansion filled with these giant floating lips, television sets that have legs, and sentient books. It says a lot when you realize that this is one of the less surreal Doom mods out there. Crimson is a rhythm platformer that uses heavy industrial electronic metal music. The graphics of this game really suit the soundtrack well, with the game looking a lot like what a homeless person tripping on acid would see. The game is really cool, and the art is really unique, but holy fuck, it is very hard. If you move in the wrong direction for a millisecond, you will die. It's super rage inducing, but it's, it's definitely addictive enough to make you finish. Mothlight is an RPG maker game made by only two people from 2017. The game revolves around a feline named Enzo, who has been kicked down to a place called the Black Sea, an infinite plane of dark water that turns any flesh it touches into metal. All of the scum of society is thrown down into this black sea so that they can be used as useful metals. Very cool. The majority of the gameplay is based on exploring the disturbing world, fighting hand-drawn sprites while trying to escape and return to the surface. While it still has that classic RPG maker clunk, the game's really unique and well made and is pretty well known. Space Funeral 2 of Rubies and Gold is the unofficial sequel to the game back in Tier 2, Space Funeral. The game was originally made to celebrate the 8th anniversary of Space Funeral being made, and then later received an expansion in the form of a director's cut. This is a fan game, by the way, and was not made by the same person who made the original. The story of this game takes place long before the first, in this place called the Claustrophobic Caverns. In the game, you learn that it takes place in the outskirts of where the original game took place. The plot revolves around this ghoul guy that has an adventure inside the treasure grotto in order to solve his insatiable hunger for gold. While not as good as the original, in my opinion, the game was received rather well by fans of the first one. And since then, a few sequels to this game have been made, as well as a ton of other fan games that take place in the same universe. 
Copper Odyssey is an RPG maker game created by Cam in 2021. This game is dubbed as the first ever printmaking RPG. The plot of the game revolves around monitoring a printing studio. According to this website I found, the game is loosely based off the developer's time as a printmaker and a printmaking monitor. This game has a really cool art style and it's worth playing just to see it. The storyline itself is also pretty good and really interesting, but I won't spoil much. Just go play it. It's it's good. Aurum Prequenga, that is that is a word, is another RPG maker game created by Isopod Mansa. The game revolves around this knight named Dala that goes out on a mission to defeat a gigantic mass of grease that threatens to block the hole in the sky in an underground world. This game is very similar to the titles I just mentioned, with a really weird plot and a cool hand-drawn style. It's got a really good soundtrack, but but other than that, it's uh it's it's alright. The Wyoming Incident is a game that was created back in 2012 and then remade in 2020. As you can guess from its name, the game is based around the super popular ARG from 2006, The Wyoming Incident. You probably recognize this photo. It's from the ARG. The Wyoming Incident is generally agreed to be the first horror ARG and possibly even the first creepypasta. I won't go into detail, but the ARG basically follows this recording of the signal broadcast interruption that was caught on TV and resulted in mass terror amongst the public due to some infrasonic frequencies that were emitted during the hijacking. Well, in this fan game, you play as one of the witnesses of the broadcast as you experience the direct results of the hijacking. As if the ARG wasn't spooky enough, this game is fucking terrifying. I hate it. I mean, it's, it's a good game, but I hate it. The Endless Empty is yet another RPG maker game from 2018 made by Eric Sheeda Smith. The premise of this game is really interesting. The game's plot takes place solely within the mind of a dying man. The person has just died, but still hasn't accepted it. His brain is trying to come to terms with the death while being disconnected from reality. This game gets really, really deep and existential and it's a bit much to analyse here. If the premise sounds cool, I really recommend playing it for yourself and making your own opinion on it. Bad Vibes is a homage to early Golden Age shooters, created by the developer P Fail. The gameplay is a lot like Wolfenstein, but with jumping, and the gameplay consists of you wandering around this dungeon, casting spells and destroying the bad vibes that are in the form of black and white monsters. There's not a lot to it, it's pretty fun and has good good music. Coochie is uh, not really a game, it's more of a playable art exhibit created in 2021. Cucci acts as a playable archive for the work of the Italian painter Enzo Cucci. Cucci is well known for working with several different techniques and materials. Honestly, his paintings are perfect for a game inspiration. He paints some really surreal and diverse landscapes that would translate perfectly into a 3D space, and this game does it really well. Unholy Eyeballs is a horror game made for a game jam in 2021. The premise of the game is to explore the concept of eyeballs and the different ways they are used within horror games, and it does it in a pretty cool way. It experiments with different game modes in a bunch of really clever and unique ways that I've never seen before. While it's not super scary or anything, it does get very surreal and quite meta. Escape from Jig is a first person point and click adventure game from 2014 where you escape from uh, Jig, whatever that is. It's a standard point and click flash game where you are trapped in a mysterious room and have to click on different objects to make stuff happen. The art is pretty detailed and it's clear that a lot of effort was put into it, but it's still a little lackluster compared to the other escape games on the iceberg. The Sunday Museum is a first person walking simulator made in 2021 by Sunshine Horror. In this game, you walk around exploring this small museum called the Sunday Museum. Like every other walking simulator on this iceberg, you can interact with different objects in the environment to be transported and see some surreal stuff happen. 
That's what the game is on the surface though. There's a bit more to it than that. I'm not smart enough to explain what I mean, so I'm gonna read you a review of the game from an art critic. The Sunday Museum is a game that socializes self-ironic assembles from various pregnant and megalomaniac outputs. What the fuck does that mean, dude? The counterbalance of sequences, comments, the surrogate dialogue towards an uncomfortably participated plotline. It marginalizes long-term and descriptive cycles from various launched landscapes. Ah, yeah, what, what, what he said. Respite 2.0 is another game from Modus Interactive, the developer behind the game's Quirrell stapler. Respite 2.0 is a very liminal yet relaxing walking simulator with some really good music and a lot of stuff to see. While there's not much to it, it's really good for a walking simulator. Misery is a Yume Nikki fan game created by the developer Owl in 2011. The lack of effects in this game set it apart from other traditional fan games, as the author's main intention is to stress the importance of exploration as the primary mode of gameplay. While the game is very linear, its unique aesthetic makes it feel very alive. While I only played it for about 10 minutes or so, I really enjoyed it. It's quite high quality for a fan game. Life Gallery is a horror puzzle game from 2020 made by 751 Games. The game follows the life of a cyclops as he grows up and becomes a person. This cyclops has a pretty rough life and the game gets quite intense and disturbing during certain parts. It really, it really comes out of nowhere when it does. While it has the classic jank and feel of a mobile game, it's definitely well made and has a ton of effort put into it. Age of Deliverance is an RPG maker game from 2014, created by Extra Value Menu. The game is a short adventure game with some pretty snazzy MS Paint graphics and a good soundtrack. The story of the game takes place two years after God has destroyed humanity. You play as a guy named John that managed to survive by locking himself into his house in the woods. After running low on supplies, John is forced to leave and explore the surreal apocalyptic world. This game has a great premise and the story gets really interesting as it progresses. With only 600 downloads on its website, it's, it's pretty underrated. Here it is, we made it. This is the single most defining point of the iceberg. This game, this is the last game in the iceberg that I have heard of prior to researching for this video. After this, I will be going in completely blind to all of the remaining entries. So uh, buckle up. Bad Milk is an insanely surreal puzzle game from the year 2000, created by Ted and Mick Skolnick. The game starts with a first person FMV, where the protagonist drinks some bad milk and collapses onto the table. This sets forward the events of the game, where the player must complete mini games in order to get out of this mundane predicament. The FMV elements of this game, combined with the constant reversed audio and weird sound effects, really make this game a trip. Go watch, uh, go watch Brutal Moose's video on it. Not that he, uh, not that he needs it, but, uh, sh shout out to, shout out to Brutal Moose. Darkest Corners is a horror visual novel from 2021, created by the developer, Spookle MacBoogle. I loved, uh, I loved looking at the itch.io page for the game and being creeped out by all the images and the gameplay. And then I find out that the guy who made it is called Spookle MacBoogle. It instantly got rid of any horror I was feeling. The game is very weird and I didn't really understand any of it. I think the story is about these ancient gods and uh, cr creation and stuff. I'm not I'm not sure. The main focus of the game is its visuals. They're pretty eerie and uh, I guess you could say surreal. Nails is a really cool looking browser game that you can no longer play because Flash Player shut down. All I could find was this gameplay and a description of the game. Nails is a browser based experience where you interact with 27 surreal animated scenes, often experimenting with movement of the human body. More of an interactive experience than a game, Nails is an art project 
created by Han Hugerbruge, which combines high quality animation, surreal art, and a touch of body horror. From the gameplay, it looks pretty similar to plug and play and other games in the genre. I'm really, I'm really bummed that I couldn't play it. Bry Guy Studios is a relatively unknown game developer with just four games under their belt. From what I can gather, all of their games are first person with surreal exploration based gameplay. I played a bit of their most recent title, Blood Pit, and uh, it's okay. The visuals are quite insane and I love them, but other than that there's not much to talk about. It's not very well made and the main mechanics are borderline frustrating in how janky they are. I was kind of bummed. The visuals and atmosphere are really good, but the gameplay definitely held it back quite a bit. Ham Ham is a very, very weird game that led me down a rabbit hole involving a Japanese game developer and some very, very weird 3D models. This person honestly warrants their own video, so I'm just gonna talk about their game Ham Ham for now. What is Ham Ham? Uh, take a look. Yeah, that's, that's about it. That was Ham Ham. Thank you for listening. You should really check out this guy's YouTube channel. I'll, uh, I'll throw it in the description. It's quite, quite wacky. I'm 70% sure that it made me develop a brain tumor, but honestly, I'm too faded to tell. Remember Bubsy? No? Fair enough. Honestly. I fucking hate the orange cunt. I, I get so pissed off every time I see him. It's like that that girl that gets mad when, when she sees minions. I get mad when I see this deformed cat person. Bubsy Visits the James Turrell Retrospective is a Bubsy 3D fan game where Bubsy explores a real-life tribute to the postmodern artist James Turrell. Why the fuck? Would anyone make a fan game of this abomination? And even stranger, why is it an educational game? This game should not exist. It goes against everything I stand for. Its mere existence offends me. Disgusting. Yucky. Helios is a game made by this interesting character named Sean M. Puckett, although it's a bit unclear whether he made it or not, as Sean swears up and down that he didn't make it himself. It was made by aliens. Sean says that he was visited by a UFO at his home in Florida on a stormy night in May of 1993. A column of green light appeared outside his house, and an alien stepped out who looked exactly like him. Sean fainted in shock, and after waking up, he saw that the game had mysteriously appeared on his computer. This is the point in the iceberg where we are at. I am now playing and reviewing games that are made by aliens. You know, I, I really hope you appreciate what I'm putting myself through here. Helios is a pretty standard maze game where it gets more complex as you continue. The game purposely underexplains itself and doesn't tell you what to do in order to feel as alien as possible. The true goal of the game is to learn all of the glyphs that make up an alien password, which would be fairly simple if the password was made up of letters, but it's not. It's made up of uh, alien symbols. Epic. You can imagine what the plain, non-alien version of Helios would be like, and it's entirely possible that it started out that way, and then he made this insane story about an alien. Garage is a very insane and very nightmarish Japanese point-and-click adventure game from 1999. The game is heavily inspired by the works and findings of Carl Jung, a German psychoanalyst. This game has quite the interesting backstory. Apparently it was considered lost media for quite a long time until 4chan managed to pull a few strings together and find it. What was once a piece of lost media is now available on Steam for anyone to play, which is really cool. That needs to happen more often. 
garage is set inside the mind of a man named Yang. Yang finds himself inside a therapy machine known as Garage, which creates within the user's mind a dystopian world similar to the Kowloon walled city in China. The city is inhabited by biochemical entities trapped on a web of tracks, repeating their days in a dark capitalist society. What stands out to me is this game's visuals. It's got the classic early 2000s CGI. Early 2000s CGI is already terrifying when it's not trying to be, so a, uh, a horror game made in the same style is uh, pretty nightmarish. While very unsettling and uncomfortable to look at, the game gets pretty deep into psychological concepts and is very well made. The Dark Eye is a first-person psychological horror adventure game developed by Inscape in 1995. Just like the last entry, this game makes use of early CGI and it's very gross and uh, disturbing. It also makes use of FMV, which is lovely because the CGI wasn't horror-inducing enough by itself. The game is a point-and-click adventure game, fueled by the macabre stories of Edgar Allan Poe. The player can experience three of his stories, from the perspectives of both murderer and victim, often being dubbed as one of the most obscure horror games ever made. The Dark Eye is a really solid title. Ghost Suburb is a surreal RPG Maker series created in 2003 by Carry On Blue. The games tell the story of a nurse named OK as she works in the Midland Research Hospital Center. Apparently, she hasn't slept in three months. Accompanying her on her journey is a floating eye named Gertrude, who claims to not be a floating eye. As the hospital begins to break down, both physically and metaphysically, OK and Gertrude explore it, searching for sleep as someone who has insomnia. Uh, this game is pretty accurate. Agony of a Dying MMO is a narrative horror game from 2021 made by the developer Salem Hughes. This game has a really great concept. The entirety of the game takes place during the final hours of an MMO before the servers shut down. The MMO once had a large fan base and is reaching the end of its life. There are still a few players remaining that you can stumble across, with each one belonging to a certain group of the internet. As someone who has been there for the closure of a few MMOs, I can say that this game encapsulates the feeling very well. The loneliness and eerie feeling you get when exploring an abandoned server that once hosted thousands of players is terrifying. It's comparable to swimming around at the bottom of the ocean. The game is still in development, and is just a playable demo at the moment. I really hope it gets finished one day. Panic! Exclamation mark is a puzzle point and click adventure game made by Sega in 1993. The game's plot revolves around a virus that has infected every computer system in the world. This kid named Slap and his dog named Stick must carry an antidote to the central computer in order to end the virus. This game is uh, rather insane and brain dead, with each environment you explore being more surreal than the last. While the gameplay is very basic and simple, its environments have that classic wacky Japanese touch. It's less of a game and more of a collection of goofy animations that are held together by a loose story. 99 Rooms is another point-and-click adventure game made in 2004. The game uses pictures of the abandoned East Berlin industrial sector, overlaid with some art made by the developers. The gameplay consists of exploring, you guessed it, 99 rooms. Each room you visit has a task that you need to complete to progress to the next. Similar to a point-and-click escape game, while not scary, the areas in this game are very weird and do get disturbing at times. David Lynch, the filmmaker and musician, has never made a video game. 
he certainly did not make this video game. If he were to make one, however, maybe it would be something like this. Ghost Dance is a very weird David Lynch inspired walking sim made by a Scream catalog and Caveware Digital in 2018. In the game, you traverse a series of horror scenes directly taken from David Lynch films and artworks, cobbled together in an incoherent fever dream. In this world, David Lynch is struggling to rebuild his creative world and he needs your help. From this description you can probably tell that this game gets wacky. It was honestly a lot more spooky than I thought it would be. There's a bunch of really loud jump scares and I uh, may have poo poo doo dooed myself more than once. No way, you, you did it. Thank you friend for making it to the end of the video. It's, uh, it's quite impressive. Well done. You should you should reward yourself, perhaps by uh, liking and uh, subscribing. Trust me, it's it's very fun to do. That is the second part of the iceberg out of the way. Good God, finally. I'm sorry for the wait. Uh, as, as Kanye West says, I'm back on my grind. So expect more constant uploads from now on. The next one will either be the next part of the iceberg or a devlog. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm making a game. By the way, <laughs> I want to do some uh, some devlogs, but I'm not sure if it would be a good fit for the channel. I don't know. Let, let me know if that sounds like something you want to see. I want to thank my three very loyal Patreons for their generous support. Thank you, Gage, Mendon, Bunny Walk, and Too Funny, Too Cool. You three are the OGs. Thank you all for watching. It, it means a ton. I will see you all in 11 years when I make another video. Goodbye.